Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the first Peanut Labs Ask the Expert Anything broadcast. My name is Annie Pettit and I am the Chief Research Officer at Peanut Labs. I'll be your host and moderator for the next 25 minutes. So this webinar is the First, in our monthly series where we talk to a thought-leading market researcher about anything that interests you, uh, not just me. <laughs> so are you curious about their take on probability samples? Are you curious if they prefer talking to people in person or on the phone or by email? Or have you ever wondered <laughs> what their favorite chocolate bar is? All of these questions are fair game in our Ask Me Anything time. It can be completely research related or not even close to research. You get to be the virtual interviewer. So we already have two more webinars planned. In February, we'll be talking with Tom Ewing from G uh, Brain Juicer. Uh, you may know him and his sock puppet, and perhaps we'll figure out what is up with that sock puppet. Uh, and in May, we have scheduled Jim Bryson from 2020 Research to join us. You can register for any of our upcoming webinars on the Peanut Labs website. In today's session, we are speaking with Kristen Luck, who has a very impressive uh, bio behind her. She is the president at Decipher. She's one of the pioneers in the multimedia online research space where she's worked in over 10 years um, as part of AC Nielsen developing full screen video and multimedia materials. She's a co-founder of OTX, which was one of the fastest growing research companies in the US. Uh, she started Forefront Consulting Group, which was later acquired by Decipher. She's the founder of WIRE, uh, Women in Research, and I don't think I can even count all the awards that she has received. Uh, the AMA's 4 Under 40 Award, Oregon's 40 Under 40 Award, uh, Oregon's Accomplished Under 40 Award, she's a Gold Stevie Award winner, Entrepreneur of the Year. Uh, I could go on and on and on. It's just, uh, <laughs> just crazy what she's accomplished. Um, so this is who we are talking today to today, and you'll see at the the either the bottom or the right hand side of your screen a question box or a chat box, and that's where you can type any of your questions for Kristen, and I'll go through as many of those questions as I possibly can. I have a few introductory questions, and then we'll just start going through your questions. So type them in. Feel free to ask difficult, controversial, strange, even personal questions. Almost nothing is off the list. So this is an Ask Me Anything broadcast. So first of all, um, I know Kristen is jumping on her way from uh, car to office. So let's just have a seat and uh, we'll see if she's made it in the, to her office just yet. All right, Kristen, are you there? I am here, and I'm in the office. That is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> the dog frenzy has subsided. <laughs> Very glad to hear it. So, uh, just to start things off, are there a, a couple things that you'd like to mention about yourself that I didn't cover in that ridiculous list of accomplishments? Uh, no, only that I'm not under 40 anymore. So, um, so <laughs> it's a good thing that I won those awards a couple years ago. <laughs> Because I don't, I don't qualify for any of the under 40 awards anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> so All I right, clean then. Up while I, still <laughs> I will start with one of the most important questions then. Um, when it comes to movies, are you more in favor of Avatar or E.T.? Um, I'd have to say Avatar because I, I really, I just loved all the special effects in that. I just, I loved it. So the M&Ms weren't sufficient for you? No, I think they were Reese's Pieces anyway, weren't they? <laughs> you're, like, you're, you're like the candy expert of the industry. You should know this. 
uh, oh, yes, I am, but, you know, I don't like to brag in front of so many people. <laughs> so that leads into my next question. Snickers bar or Mars bar? Um, you know, I, I have to tell you that I don't. Um, I don't really like chocolate. <laughs> that is shameful. I, oh, I'm missing, I'm missing the chocolate gene. Um, you know, I think if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick a Snickers bar, but it would be under duress. I just, I would just wouldn't, would only eat a, eat a candy bar. I know it's really, really odd. <laughs> then what is your snack food? Um, you know, I like really salty snacks, so any kind of like potato chip, cracker, anything that's kind of like salty, bready is, is, is really more of my thing. I'm not really into sweets that much. Okay, yeah, so that's the really bread kind of choice. Chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, given we've covered a few very important things, um, let's uh, delve into a slightly uh, more interesting question. Uh, what do you think is the biggest challenge in your position? Oh gosh, I mean, I think the biggest challenge, um, the biggest challenge for me is just keeping a handle on working on the business versus working in the business, which are two really, really different things. Um, and I think, I think anytime you get into a position where there's a fair amount of strategy and planning um, involved, it's it's tough to kind of lose sight of that big picture when you get really sort of wrapped up in the in the day-to-day -day details. And I, I think I'm really fortunate because I do travel a lot, so I get out of the office quite a bit. You know, I'm at a lot of conferences. I get to talk to a lot of different people, and I, I think that kind of helps me get more into that strategic headspace. But I, I definitely think that's the biggest challenge. It, it's almost like the more that I'm in the office, the, the worse it is, you know, to, to kind of like get, get outside of, of what that sort of day-to-day -day grind is and, and really figure out, hey, what's our next big move. Do you, do you think there's a, a percentage of time that you try to aim for, a percentage on the business versus doing the business? I mean, ide ideally, you know, it's like I, I, see, I feel like, you know, as you get further and further up in senior management, ideally, you know, you should be spending, you know, you know, 70 to 80 percent of your time on strategy and 20 percent on the actual day to day. But I, 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 think, I don't think that's realistic for most people. I mean, I, I, I would say on a good day, I spend maybe six, you know, 60 to 70 percent on day to day and 30 to 40 percent on, on you know, sort of looking looking at bigger picture um, items. But you know, it just it really it it just really varies. And I really am, you know, one of the things that I think I've I've struggled with is. To, to delegate and make choices about what's really important and, and, and what's not. And I'm, I'm really fortunate that we have such a great team at Decipher, and so it's, it's easy to sort of push, push things off and say, you know, what, that's not going to get my attention today, and that's okay. Okay. So do you have any concerns about the market research industry dying, and then what is Decipher going to do? Um, you know, I mean, I don't have any concerns about research dying per se, but but I do feel like it's evolving in a really fundamental way. And I mean, that that was one of the things that we looked at in our business a couple of years ago. I mean, when I first joined Decipher back in 2007, we were strictly a services firm. So we, you know, we didn't license our software at all. We sort of were, were looking around and realizing like, hey, you know, people are, are more, more and more, you know, trying to program their own surveys or bringing their own software and their own tools in-house. And so you know, we, we sort of make, made a decision at that point, hey, we, we, you know, we've got to evolve our business. And, and now even just in the last couple of years, it's been looking at, you know, hey, we're not an online research company anymore. Now we're, um, you know, now we're um, a mobile, you know, now we're heading towards mobile. And then what's going to be the next, you know, data collection mode after mobile? Maybe it'll be instant messenger. So it, it really is just trying to keep an eye on what's going on outside outside of the industry and what sort of technology trends are going on and then trying to evolve the business accordingly. And I think we all have to do that as researchers. Okay. Someone's just asked, um, do you have any examples of a, an effective uh, time when you've used mobile qual? You know, it's interesting. I, I haven't done qual that much in the last 15 years. I, you know, I, it was a really important part of sort of learning the ropes of research. You know, when I worked at Lieberman back in the 90s, um, I did a lot of qual, and we even did a fair amount of qual at OTX. But, you know, I just don't, I don't do any online qual, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we have a couple of tools that we use. We, you know, we have iModerate that we've integrated um, into our system, and we, we just are in the process of integrating another piece of technology called Quester, which is a 
you know, qu qualitative like tool set. I mean, I think what I really struggle with, you know, when it comes to qual, and I think a lot of people do, is do you what do you lose if you, um, you know, if you don't have that sort of face-to-face -face interaction um, with respondents. But I do think there's a lot of, of good tools out there. There's lots of um, of interesting, more like bulletin board type of stuff, like um, like um, Accelerant Research has one called Blognog that's pretty awesome. And you know, I've definitely seen some tools, but I think you know, qualitative is going to evolve in a fundamentally different way than quant is. Okay. Um, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. <laughs> totally easy, <laughs> without a doubt. Coke. Since you were a youngin, or just because it's an adult drink now? Um, you know, I just like the way Coke tastes. It has a totally different taste than Pepsi. I can't really explain it. But I'm a Coke purist. I don't drink Diet Coke. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Didn't want to say anything there. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm a traditional, a traditional Coke drinker. I do not, I, I do not drink the diet, the diet variety. <laughs> I think if you're going to have a Coke, you should just go for it and have one. <laughs> go nuts. <laughs> yeah. McDonald's or Burger King? Oh God! You know I don't eat fast food. Um, I, yeah, probably one little known fact about me is that I'm actually vegan. So I don't, <laughs> I don't really eat at McDonald's or Burger King. I guess if I, I had to make a choice, I would say McDonald's because I think their fries are better, and that's probably one of the only things I could eat there. What is? Where does this choice about being vegan come from? You know, I had um, a, a pretty serious health scare a couple years ago, and um, you know, for me, it was kind of taking a, a look and, and assessing the things in my life that I felt like weren't weren't exactly working or benefiting me in a fundamental way, and um, and so I kind of went through this detoxification plan, um, which involved uh, not only detoxifying um, my my personal life, but also you know, sort of how I work day to day and um, and, and also how I travel. You know, travel is really stressful. I know it, it's funny. I was just talking to someone in my office this morning, and he travels with me quite frequently, and he was saying, yeah, everybody thinks it's so much fun when you're traveling all the time. But, you know, it's a lot of work, and it's stressful, and it's, it's definitely not the same as being at home. And so, um, you know, making my health and what I put in my body a priority and, and um, fitness and taking care of myself and allowing myself downtime. Um, just became of greater importance to me, and, and becoming vegan was one of those, just trying to improve what I put in my body on a day-to-day -day basis. How do you stay vegan when you're attending conferences? <laughs> it, it can be really tough at conferences. I think people have gotten a, a lot more sensitive about it, and, and I think part of, part of what's helped is that I'm on a number of conference committees, and so when there aren't vegan options, um, I'm... I don't make a sink about it, but I mentioned that it might be nice to have one. Um, I mean, I think the nice thing is that if you, lots of lots of times there's a vegetarian option, but it has dairy in it, and so that makes it inherently not vegan. Um, but I will say I've I've um, I've eaten my share of crudite plates at conferences, and it's not it's not a lot of fun. Um, but you know, I I think with anything in life, you just do the best you can. You know, I mean, there's instances where you know I'm going to eat a little bit of meat or a little bit of dairy. I th I think you know, from my goal is can I get I get to a 90% vegan diet, and if there's 10% of the time where I'm on a plane or something goes awry or I'm at a conference and I can't get what I need to eat, then that's okay. Okay. So since we're on the personal side, um, here's a question for you. Um, you don't have any kids. Now, is that because you hate kids and they're terrible, or is it because of your career? Yeah, you know, that's an interesting question because I'm, I'm 41 now, and so I get asked that that question a lot, not not just by people in the industry, but also by by my family. Um, I have two beautiful children that happen to all have four legs. Um, <laughs> you know, it's what are their names? You know, <laughs> Greta and Sadie are my dogs. They're sitting right here. Um, you know, I mean, I think I think having children, is, you know, and who you have children with is the most important decision you can make in your life. Um, and I just, you know, I haven't. Um, had a whole lot of successful successful relationships, I guess I would say, that would um, have benefited from from having children. So it just hasn't been a priority to me. And I, I think you know, I look at girlfriends of mine that have kids, and 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 I love children. Um, and I they've really you know gone out of their way to make that sort of a priority and to um, make space in their life for children. And I just haven't done that. And so. You know, I love children. I love hanging out with my friends' kids, and then I also really love it when they go home and I get to read my books and have a cup. 
Um, that's not to say that it won't happen, but um, but it's it's not in the cards, at least not this year. <laughs> All right then. Um, we've got another question from someone. What topic is top of your list to research or learn about? Um, for me right now, I'm really interested in mobile payment systems, so like digital wallet systems. And um, there's um, this guy, Tom Satati, he owns Brand Integrated in, in Kenya. And I met him a couple years ago at World Brand Congress, and then I reconnected with him um, this last year. He actually um, spoke on this Emerging Markets panel that I hosted at the market research event. And, um, and so Tom was telling me about uh, how they have a mobile payment system in Kenya called M-Pesa. And was just kind of explaining to me how they sort of use it for everything. And I just, um, I just downloaded a Square Wallet on my phone, and so the the coffee shop that's literally like a block from my office takes it. So I never have to actually walk around with my wallet if I want a coffee or get anything from that shop because I can just pay with my phone. Um, and I'm kind of fascinated by that and sort of how it relates to mobile and how we're sort of going to incent respondents. Um, in the future, not just in the U.S., but, but globally. Um, I think, you know, particularly internationally, people are using their phones in really different ways already than we are here in the U.S. So um, from my perspective, mobile payment is, is kind of like the next big frontier that, that we really want to um, take a look at and, and really understand a, l a little bit better. It's just it's really fascinating to me, and so I'm, I'm sort of digging and doing some research around that. How long do you think it'll be before everything we do is from the phone? Forget the wallets, forget all the accessories, everything is from that little electronic device. I mean, I think we're only a couple years away from it. Um, you know, I have to get rid of my wallet now? <laughs> no, I, I would love if I could get rid of my wallet now, but I don't think that's going to, I mean, my wallet is so jammed with crap, it's, it's unbelievable, but... Um, <laughs> You know, I mean, I I think, you know, in some countries that's already happening, you know, where people just do, they use their, their phone for everything. But, um, you know, I, I don't think we're that far away. I think more than anything, we're just waiting on technology to keep up with demand more than anything else. So I don't I don't think that we're that far off, and that's sort of why I've been so outspoken in the industry about mobile and designing surveys for mobile and the importance of that. And I think, um, I think there's a lot of firms um, in, in a similar situation who are really, really focused on that as well. Okay. Uh, Batman or Superman? Oh, God. <laughs> Life-changing question. Superman, I know. Jesus. Um, I have Batman because he's got a really cool car. <laughs> so it's the toys that interest you, okay? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I guess so. I'm not really a car person, but that's a pretty hot car Batman's got. <laughs> um, movies or reading? Uh, you know, I'm a pretty voracious reader, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a book traditionalist. I don't like, I know this is going to sound really funny, I don't like e-readers. I really love, like, just completely um, unwiring at, at the end of the day and, like, detaching from all electronics and reading a book. So, so I'm definitely, definitely more of a book person. What do you love more, the smell of opening a new book or <laughs> cracking the spine? I think I like cracking the spine more. <laughs> Is that 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 means some, there's something really wrong with me, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, okay, beach or mountains? Oh gosh, you know I live in the mountains, so I'm gonna say mountains. I love I love a good mountain. Yeah, I'm a I'm a hiker and I'm an outdoors. I'm really into the outdoors, so mountain definitely. And how many legs have you broken while skiing and hiking? I have never broken a leg. <laughs> No, I broke an ankle when I was in uh, junior high riding a, a three-wheeler, um, but I, yeah, I've never, never broken a leg. I've never broken a bone, actually. That's so. impressive. Yeah, it, it is impressive, given my snowboarding abilities. <laughs> <laughs> um, why did you start WIRE? First, tell us what it is, and then tell us why you started it. Yeah, so... Um, a wire is women in research, and it's and it's interesting. You know, I did. It's kind of evolved over the last you know seven or eight years. You know, originally it, it started really informally. My, my friend Elaine Coleman um, uh, had moved to to San, from San Francisco to LA, and and we were talking, and she's like, you know, it's really hard to kind of meet other women in the industry, and I'm kind of curious to to meet some of the other women you know, and so I, I that's this is when I was living in LA, and. I thought, yeah, you know, it'd be just kind of fun. I'm just going to get my, you know, my my 
my uh, my contact list and see how many people, how, see how many women I know in research. I'm just going to invite everyone out for cocktails, and it was super informal. Um, I think we had like maybe 25 people show up to the first one, and we had so wow. much fun that we just decided, hey, we're going to do it quarterly, like we're going to get together every quarter. Um, and then it just sort of evolved. It's kind of taken on a life of its own in some ways. We, one of our members, um, Cassandra Rowe, um, who was in L.A., uh, moved to New York and, and really wanted to start doing events in New York. So we started doing events in New York. And then uh, um, uh, someone in, in London suggested we should do an event in London. And, and so now, yeah, now we do, we do events all over the globe. And it's, it's kind of um, it, it's become a more formalized process. You know, we do, we do webinars. We... Um, do events. We have a mentoring program. Um, we're um, in, in, gosh, I think either seven or eight cities now um, around the globe, including Sydney and London. And um, I have uh, actually a good industry friend who's looking into a possible group in Singapore. So, um, so yeah, it's been good. It, and it's been it's been good for me in some ways too because I, you know, I, I kind of got to a point. I got to a tipping point with the with the group last year where I realized it was never going to grow beyond you know a couple cities if if I didn't let go of the reins a little bit, and um, and that's why we kind of have this, uh, you know, executive team now where there's women in each of these key cities who really oversees and, and runs the groups and kind of helps me, um, you know, manage from day to day because now we've got over a thousand members globally. Wow. So is it just women? It's you know it's mostly women. Um, you know, there's there's always dudes that show up to the events, which which we love. Business partners have come to a couple events. Um, I know Josh Chasen from Comscore has showed up at a few events. Um, you know, so we certainly don't uh, don't shut men out of the events, but they're you know they're they're focused on women and women's issues, and so they're probably a, a little less interesting to men. But but certainly we're we're. Oh, did we lose you? Nope. I'm still okay. Here. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to ask just a couple more questions. Um, someone is asking, what characteristic trait do you value most in a person? Oh, you know, um, oh gosh, that's a tough one because there's so many, Go ahead, so many traits, you know. Um, <laughs> list them out. Um, I can list more than one. Um, you know, uh, you know, trustworthiness, um, reliability is really big for me. Um, you, you know, I mean, I think that's number one. Um, I'm trying to think, for the most, you, you know, I like um, I like people that are that are creative and not afraid to speak their mind. I mean, I think I think I really value that in the people that I work with day to day, and and also in um, the people that I hang out with in my personal life that have creative approaches to doing things and um, sort of don't go the standard um, standard route. Um, it, it was funny. I was just talking to someone the other day. They were asking me like, you kind of dated this very eclectic um, a bunch of men over the years because I never date anybody in business. I've, you know, dated a whitewater rafting guide and um, my boyfriend now is a poet. So, you know, it just... So um, who is I, I, currently a special someone in your life? Yeah, yes, yeah. Is, is this person in research? No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> that sounds like he better not ever be in market research. No. Yeah, no. You know, I mean, I just, I feel like, um, and, and, you know, I know there's lots of people in research that are sort of coupled off together, and, and, and this is, no, you know, no disrespect to, to anybody who's, who's, in, who's a couple in research, but for me, when I come home at night, I don't want to talk about research. I don't want to talk about work. I don't want to talk about business. Um, and so to have, to have a partner that, you know, has their own separate interests and, um, and, you know, it, it, it's a more creative field, I, I guess, than what I would consider myself in. It is important to me. Okay. Yeah, I value that. Um, Starbucks or Tim Hortons? Or what? What was the other one? Tim Hortons. You cannot say you don't know Tim Hortons. I don't know what Tim Hortons oh, is. Oh, my goodness. Okay. There's going to be a bucket of uh, Timbits on, your, uh, on the way to your house. That is Canada Starbucks. Oh, okay. I said, I don't spend a whole lot of time in Canada. Um, <laughs> that needs to change. Yeah, I don't really like Starbucks either, to be honest with you. I'm more of like a local, you know, we're in, in Oregon. If you've ever seen Portlandia, we're a bunch of coffee snobs here. So <laughs> we like our little small homebrew, you know, like coffee shops. <laughs> Support the little guy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right. 
I'm going to end off with one question. If you were going to write a book, what would it be about? What would the title be? Oh, gosh. Um, if I was going to write a book, I would probably write a book. Oh, well, I don't want to give away my big book idea. Okay, book um, number two. Book number two. <laughs> book number two. We, you know, I mean, I think one of the things that's kind of missing from, uh, you know, um, I'd be most likely to write a business book first of all, but I think one of the things that one of the things that's kind of missing is, um, you know, for entrepreneurs, all the things that you can do to really um, f things up when you start a business, uh, because there's a lot of mistakes, really fundamentally big mistakes you can make that nobody ever really tells you about. They certainly don't cover it in in business school. I mean, I didn't go to business school, but I've sat through enough business school classes about entrepreneur entrepreneurism and new ventures to say that I've never heard any of the really classic screw-ups that I've made um, mentioned. So, you know, I think there's a I think there's a market for that. And it sounds <laughs> yeah. like perhaps a book forthcoming from you is that reasonable? Um, I wouldn't say it's forthcoming. It's it's something that I've been working on, but in the very very limited time that I have, it, it's probably a, a lifetime away at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'll just say in the next two years, I'll be waiting for your book. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Um, it looks like we've come to the end of our time today. Is there anything you'd like to end off with, Kristen? Um, no, I mean, I, hey, I appreciate all the questions, um, and you know, certainly, I I hope that um, I hope I hope that that some of the business comments that I made have been helpful for people, um, and I, I try to be as accessible as possible. So if you have questions that you didn't want to ask on the webinar and you just want to shoot me an email, feel free to to do that. I'm I'm pretty responsive on email, so. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Kristen, for taking the time to have a little fun with you. And uh, we will see you on email, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and a bunch <laughs> of other places later All on. All of them. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me.